Behind the headlines, mountaintop removal. The recent chemical spill in West Virginia brought renewed national attention to the dangers associated with the coal industry. But people who live in Appalachia say they don't need a massive crisis to stoke their fears. Their reminders come nearly every day in the form of explosions. When you're woke up out of a dead sleep at 7 o'clock in the morning by a horrendous blast, that shakes everything in your house, it changes your life dramatically. Maria Gano lives in Boone County, West Virginia, in a community downwind from mountains purposely exploded for their coal. The coal industry is creating more activists every day. Gano is an environmental activist who's been fighting to end what is referred to as mountaintop removal. When the companies started polluting our water and blasting the mountains over our homes, uh, I had no choice but to stand up. Gano has paid a price for standing up. I now currently live inside of uh, 400 feet of chain link fence with two guard dogs and a security <laughs> system. I've had people threaten me and my kids. I've had people threaten burn my home. I get run off of the road. Gano says it's gotten better over the years as neighbors see the impact. She believes education is key to winning the battle. That's why she took to the contrary on an air and land tour to see the devastation from mountaintop removal. We were up over the mountains for a few moments when... They just set off a blast over here because see had a cloud of dust. Really, it started in the 80s. It's big surface mines. The technology is what really made it possible. Moving 20 tons of rock for every ton of coal you get, you know, that normally, until you got the, got the uh, economy of scale, uh, you know, pound top removal didn't make sense. Sometimes referred to as strip mining on steroids, mountaintop mining or mountaintop removal is a technique used in West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee. It starts with clearing forests and brush. Explosives then bring down 500 plus feet of the mountain to expose the coal seams. There's one and a half million acres of mountaintop removal that's either proposed, permitted, active in southern Appalachia. Huge machines called drag lines scoop up to 100 tons in a single load. The rock and dirt end up in the valleys and streams, often burying natural waterways. As bad as MTR looks, you know, that's not my big concern. My big concern is the effects that we don't see, the impacts to groundwater, the impacts to air, the impacts to surface water, and that pathway into people. Advocates for ending MTR cite peer-reviewed studies confirming its link to disease. They include increased rates of death from heart disease, certain cancers, and a higher percentage of birth defects. My daughter's only 19 years old, and she's lost three friends to cancer, the first one being when she was 12 years old. We have one little girl in our community right now that graduated with my daughter. She has four kinds of cancer right now. Gano says the environmental destruction has other deadly consequences. That slurry impoundment, that's where they store the water that they use to wash and prepare the coal. Look at the water downstream of it. This is your drainage that comes off of it. In 1972, when a rain-soaked impoundment dam collapsed, 138 million gallons of wastewater flooded out the community of Buffalo Creek. 125 people killed. Uh, seven people was never found. There was 4,000 people left homeless. That was the reason for Surface Mine Reclamation Act laws. With hundreds of impoundments in West Virginia, activists fear future crises. This island in the sky is the center of a different coal controversy and lawsuit. A family cemetery where Civil War veterans are buried sits high above a massive mining site. Gano is part of the lawsuit charging the coal company with with desecrating the graves by blasting the mountain and making it nearly impossible for relatives to visit. You can't get there without going to the company. The company says it's gone above and beyond to protect the cemetery and access to it. Environmentalists have secured victories, though. Patriot Coal agreed to stop mountaintop removal practices due to selenium pollution in the streams. And there is Kayford Mountain. 
the next stop on our tour. It's a very valuable piece of land. If you keep your eyes open, you'll actually be able to see pieces of coal. The coal company actually tried to buy Larry's land. They offered him an amount of money that no person in their right mind could possibly turn down. And that was about a million dollars an acre for the 50 acres. But the owner, Larry Gibson, turned them down. Today, the Keeper of the Mountains Foundation keeps it intact. So the mountain directly in front is a great example of the, what the mountain should look like. What's interesting about the mountaintops that you see here is there are permits out on these mountaintops. And if those permits are allowed to be exploited, then those mountaintops will be taken away. On the other side of the park, mountains give way to surface mining. And this used to be the low point on this mountain, and now it's the highest. So the one thing that the coal industry has given us is a bird's eye view of the hell they've created. And we bring people up here and we show them because you will never understand mountaintop removal until you've looked upon it with your own eyes and you've felt it in your own heart. Directly in front of us is an active mining site that eventually will look like this. There may be a dozen varieties on this particular reclamation and there was a thousand varieties of plants. Now there's this, you know, a dozen species all struggling to survive. Environmental advocates say the air and water are so polluted, even if mountaintop removal ended tomorrow, no one knows how long it would take to get rid of the pollutants. These waters are contaminated with a multitude of different things. There's arsenic, lead, uh, manganese, strontium, you know, elements that while in the ground are essentially harmless, but when exposed to the oxygen, when the mountains have blown up, they become toxic. You have rock dust and everything else raining down in the community. So they develop things like emphysema and lung cancer. And uh, we have reports of children with the lung capacity of a 75-year-old full-time smoker. I've seen people uh, drink polluted water, water that had uh, diesel fuel floating in it. Um, and they'd look at you and say, what choice do we have? There's little, if any, trust that government or the coal industry care about the future of Appalachia. And advocates say mountaintop mining can't be justified by the claim that it's a job creator. People who do mine the coal here will have a decent wage for a very short period of time, but with mountaintop removal, mining jobs have actually decreased because it doesn't take very many people to blow up a mountain. They extract the, the resources, they extract the wealth, and they impoverish the people. We're not given any options for a future. Coal is a dinosaur technology. What coal we do have left in the ground should be used as a transition fuel to the next generation of new technology in, in energy production. There's ways of making electricity uh, where we don't have to blow up mountains and we don't have to pollute people's water. So Janet Keating, now you're in the studio here with us. Thank you for joining us. Talk about the ways that, uh, uh, that energy could and should be being extracted uh, for, to, you know, to power the country, to power West Virginia. Well, you know, we have a real opportunity. I, we have the most creative people in this country, and renewable energy is not something that is a, a dream far, far away. We could start with the low-hanging fruit, energy efficiency. That's 35% of our uh, current energy could be replaced, you know, our fossil fuel energy, just by energy efficiency. We should be subsidizing the good stuff, like energy efficiency and providing tax breaks for that. So we have all these flattened mountains. Why don't we have solar panels on them? We have the ability in West Virginia, our solar power is comparable to that of Germany. And Germany now is powering half of its, its electricity is coming from solar. So we, we have the know-how and my goodness, couldn't we put a lot of miners back to work, you know, in solar energy in, in other fields, yes. Congresswoman Norton, I've read that that spill that's get all in the news right now, the chemical spill, which was chemicals used to treat water, I believe, um, that that uh, that was uh, an unregulated chemical company. Why is it that Congress, why isn't it that people in government in, in West Virginia aren't trying to ban these places? Bonnie, if you want to look, want, want to figure out what an unregulated society looks like you look at West Virginia. Uh, the state had a, such a strong mining tradition. 
that it and it, so few obvious resources i so agree with you now it's abundant in new technology resources that it became so dependent on coal that now it's blown itself up in effect and and blown up with it resources it must have like water like 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 clean air uh, and the federal government hasn't done a good job either, but West Virginia uh, has inflicted harm on its people. The you were born and raised there. <laughs> yes, I was born and raised in southern Appalachia, um, the county over from Boone County, Raleigh County, which was not affected by the chemical leak that happened. Those were substances that cleaned coal in a plant unregulated, like you said. Elected officials have been in bed with big coal for a very long time, whether they be Republican or Democrat. No administration, Republican or Democrat, again, has held mountaintop removal to what it should be, banned. They have not banned it. No administration. And I'll tell you, what's most interesting, 57% of Tea Partiers, last poll I checked a few years back, were against mountaintop removal when told that it polluted their clean, dr clean drinking water. And by the streams. way, we tried to get in touch with Shelley, tried to do an interview for this story with Shelley Moore Capito, who's a Republican from West Virginia, now running to, and probably will, replace Jay Rockefeller in the Senate. We were unsuccessful. Your thoughts? Well, uh, your Rena's exactly right. Big coal is, uh, has been such a support to politicians from both parties that they found it hard to challenge it, and it simply may need to happen at a higher level. But we cannot think about the public health cost mm -hmm. of the cancers, of the lack of clean water, of the air pollution, the the of public. the miners who used to go in the mountains anyway exactly. and come out with lung disease. Black lung. Billions and billions of dollars in public health impact on an annual basis. If you look at the public health cost of um, domestic violence, it's estimated at $4.1 a year. This has got to, to parallel that at least, if not greater, year after year after year. What's well, going on with the movement to ban mountaintop removal? Well, let me just say first that the, the, we're at a point of diminishing returns when you have to blow up mountains to get thin seam coal or to get any kind of energy when you're literally destroying the mountains and the water in which all life depends. So the and move, habitat and all absolutely. kinds of species. And right, and, and actually forests, which can help mitigate the, the problems with global warming. So, um, but the movement itself, we, it's, it's still pretty strong, but it's it's not getting the kind of, seriously, it's not getting the kind of funding it needs to make its voices heard in the, in the federal government. Um, I would like to see a strong call for the acid, or the um, uh, AML money, abandoned mine land money. There's $2.5 billion in it, it just languishing and it could go a long way to restore, you know, the miners could turn those, those bulldozers around to reclaim the land, to heal the land, to help uh, uh, clean up the acid mine drainage, the slurry impoundments, billions of gallons of toxic sludge that's looming over communities that could give way just like Buffalo Creek did. And, right. you know, yeah. Thank, and, and let's, we'll keep following what happens with that. Please. That money should go to that purpose.